Welcome to Pleasant View. Uh, we can do better than that. Welcome to Pleasant View this morning. Thank you. It's good to see each and every one of you here this morning. What a nice, beautiful, bright, sunshiny morning and a nice, cool morning at that, right? We're enjoying this beautiful weather. I do have a few announcements for you. If you will, please fill out your pew pad. You will likely find that to your left. Send that down the row. Let us know that your bright and shiny faces are here. If you have any prayer requests, please be sure to jot those down. We would love to pray for you and with you for your requests. Also, if you notice that someone is missing around you or you that are on the video, we welcome you to come back and join us if you're able. We miss your faces. Reach out to those that you may have missed seeing for a while. On the 26th, Sunday the 26th, we have a couple of special activities coming up. Jim and Kim Goddard will be here at 5 p.m. here in the sanctuary. They are going to be sharing about an upcoming trip to the Holy Land that will be occurring in January of 2023. Please come, hear what they have to share, and if you're interested, we'd love to have you all join on that trip. That same Sunday, we're going to have our first Vesper service held out in our new shelter at 7 p.m. Please invite your friends to come. I hear we're going to have a lot of singing at that service, so we're excited about that service. So invite your friends. I think we're even going to have some children's music some during that evening, so hopefully we can make that a part of our service as well. And Miss Catherine's got a message. Good morning, friends. I just wanted to thank you for all of your help with Vacation Bible School, because we had a fun, fun three evenings. We had about 50 kids here, and if you notice, we did a mission project. There are snacks up at the front of the church, and those are going to the um, Children's Advocacy Center. The other thing I wanted to mention to you is we have five kids going to camp this week, which is really exciting, and I would just ask that you would pray for those kids this week as they um, experience camp, and don't forget, our pastor's going too. As we start this morning off in worship, I want to remind you, this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let's worship. Good morning, and as Dr. Frederick, I'll be leading you this morning. Please stand for him 381. We're doing verses 1 and 2. Now let us recite the Apostles' Creed together. Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, 
and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Before you all are seated, please, we're bringing back our greetings, so please turn, greet your neighbors, give them a big wave, say hello. If you would please open your hearts and minds as we prepare for prayer, let's turn your eyes upon Jesus. to give a praise. Catherine already spoke to it, but we had a great Bible school this week, and if you all were not able to be here, you missed some exciting fun. The first night, we kept seeing more kids show up, and more kids show up, and more kids show up. As Catherine said, we were just shy of 50 kids, and it was a blessing, and the Lord moved in mysterious ways with these children and through our leaders, and I want to, to give thanks to Catherine for her leadership in guiding that, but also all of the helpers, because we could not do that. And the Lord was present, and no 
that he was here. So it was exciting, exciting time to be a part of. So if you guys didn't join, come next year because you'll get a blessing from it. Any other phrases that anyone would like to share this morning? If not, I want to share a few of our prayer requests that we had. I think my mic's falling, but I'll hold it. Um, please do keep in mind this week as you're praying, continue to pray for Aileen Lambert, Sue Dolinger, Dino Flattery, Blake McKinney, Jamie Turner, Blake Eads, Norma Center, Gail Fleener, Donna Dotson, Nancy Wright, Rocky Blevins, Randy Smith. As Catherine stated, we do have uh, some of our children that are going to, to camp this week, so keep them in your prayers. And our youth right now are on uh, a mission trip down to Johns Island, so please keep them in your prayers this week. Does anyone have any others that they would like to, to verbally make known this morning? Thank you. Really take. Any others this morning? Any unspokens? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for the stillness of this moment, dear Jesus. We thank you for the prayers that are being lifted up by your people. We pray that you hear those prayers, that you work and move in a mighty way, dear Heavenly Father. Sometimes we don't always get the answers that we would like or that we think we should have, God, but you have a perfect plan for each and every one of us. We may not understand what that plan may be, but help us to be faithful to you, to have open minds and open hearts, and be ready to move at your behest. I thank you for all the many that are represented this morning. We pray for those that are not with us and may be on vacation or just unable to make it this morning, dear Lord, for different reasons. But we pray for each and every one of those that are in our congregation, dear Heavenly Father. Pray that you'll give them a special blessing. Father, there are many, many, many names listed on our, on our prayer list this morning and on our bulletin of many different needs for people. Many are physical needs. Some may be emotional, physical, spiritual needs, dear Heavenly Father. You know each and every one of us in our hearts. And I pray that you will work in and according to your purpose in each of those different things, dear Jesus. We pray for our kids this week as several are going to camp. We pray that you will move in a mighty way, that they will have a wonderful experience of fun, but also of just getting to know who you are in a more intimate way. We pray for our teens that are on a mission trip down to John's Island. I pray that you will move in a mighty way within those young adults, your Heavenly Father. Help them to, to be a blessing to those that they are working with and helping this week, but more importantly, help them, again, to come to know you in a more personal and intimate way, dear Heavenly Father. That they develop that relationship with you that is lifelong and everlasting, and that they cherish that. Father, in this time of chaos in our world, we continue to pray for, for the many, many situations throughout our world. We pray for the people of Ukraine. We pray for the people of Russia, dear Heavenly Father, that you will bring that fighting to an end and that senseless loss of life. God, we pray for the many different things that are happening even throughout our country that are just senseless acts. We may not understand those things, Father, but we pray for your hand of protection and your hand of hope in those communities. God, we thank you so much for being a part of our lives. Help us to never take for granted our relationship with you and the hope that that brings to each and every one of us. Father, we don't always have the right words to say, but in those times, you've given us the perfect prayer to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Father, we thank you for these gifts. We pray that you will use them to further your kingdom here in our local community throughout the world. God, we thank you so much for all the many blessings in your heavenly name we pray. Amen. You may be seated, and if our kids would come forward. Okay, good morning, guys. So, so we have all of these snacks, right? Did we collect these? And what did we collect them for? Do you remember? The Children's Advocacy Center. And you got to visit the center, right? And what do they do there? Do you remember? Do you remember, James? You got to go, too. They talk about feelings, right? When kids have big feelings or they've got worries on their hearts, they, they, they help them work it out, right? And they help their families, too. And if you do want more information, they have a wonderful website with lots of things, with everything that they do. But what they've discovered is if kids have hungry bellies, it's really hard to talk about your feelings when your belly's empty. So they ask for some snacks. And I said, we can do that. We can help you out. And look at all of the things the kids brought. Isn't that wonderful? Man, y'all have been hard at work, haven't you? Now, before I take these sacks to the center this week, I thought we should maybe pray over them. What do you think? You think everybody will help us out there? What do you think, James? Okay. <laughs> okay, well, let's pray. Can you help me? Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for all of these snacks. Lord, we pray over them. We pray for the kids that are going to be eating them. And we pray for their families as they, as they have difficult situations. Lord, I pray that these snacks will just give a little bit of comfort. And that they will, they will feel your love and feel your peace. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture lesson this morning comes from Luke chapter 8. I'll be reading verses 26 through 39. If you're able, I invite you to stand together as we show reverence to the reading of scripture. Then they sailed to the country of the Gerasenes, which is opposite Galilee. When Jesus had stepped out on land, there met him a man from the city who had demons. For a long time he had worn no clothes, and he had not lived in a house but among the tombs. When he saw Jesus, he cried out and fell down before him and said with a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I beg you. Do not torment me. For he had commanded the unclean spirit to come out of the man. For many a time it had seized him. He was kept under guard and bound with chains and shackles, but he would break the bonds and be driven by the demon into the desert. Just then Jesus asked him, What is your name? And he said, Legion. For many demons had entered him, and they begged him not to command them to depart into the abyss. Now a large herd of pigs was feeding there on the hillside, and they begged him to let them enter these. So he gave them permission. Then the demons came out of the man and entered the pigs, and the herd rushed down the steep bank into the lake and drowned. When the herdsmen saw what had happened, they fled and told it in the city and in the country. Then people went out to see what had happened, 
And they came to Jesus and found the man from whom the demons had gone, sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. And they were afraid. Those who had seen it told them how the demon-possessed man had been healed. Then all the people of the surrounding country of the Gerasenes asked him to depart from them, for they were seized with great fear. So he got into the boat and returned. The man from whom the demons had gone begged that he might be with him. But Jesus sent him away, saying, Return to your home and declare how much God has done for you. And he went away, proclaiming throughout the whole city how much Jesus had done for him. This is the word of God for the people of God, and we say together, thanks be to God. Please be seated. A new family had shown up in our church. They were a blended family. The husband and wife still in their 30s. She brought three children into the marriage, and he brought two children into the marriage. And so we lovingly called them the Brady Bunch that had come to our congregation. One Sunday morning, giving the in giving the altar call, I noticed that this man had made his way down from the choir loft and had knelt to pray at the chancel rail, and our associate pastor was praying with him. I knew that the family was having some. Adjustment issues, you don't just throw a family together and everything be wonderful right from the beginning. But other people responded to the altar call and I prayed with a few of them. And then I looked over and noticed that the same man and our associate pastor were still deep in conversation and prayer. And so we sung through the hymn one more time. Still, they were in deep conversation and prayer. And so I dismissed the service. And still, the conversation was taking place at the chancel rail. I'd encourage people that morning to think about the things going on in their lives that haunted them, to name their demons. And this young man was pouring his heart out, and he was, in fact, naming his demon. His first marriage had ended when he could not control his drinking. Now on his second marriage, his drinking was becoming an issue again. And that morning he named his demon his alcoholism. We got him the professional help that we needed. We walked alongside of him as a church staff. And the story has a happy ending. I still keep up with this couple on Facebook. They've now been married over 25 years. But I believe the only reason that they are married today is because the man found the courage to name the demon that was raging inside him. He 
had started drinking in college because that's what his group did that he ran with. But every time in life that his stress level rose, so did his drinking. When he confessed, when he named that demon, he began to find the necessary tools to go to work. to silence that which raged in him. So, we have a story today. Jesus and his disciples had been working their way around the Sea of Galilee. On the western side of the Sea of Galilee, there was a strong Jewish influence in fact, most of the people there were Jewish. But on the eastern side of the sea, there were others there who had no part of the Jewish tradition. And Luke says Jesus and his disciples got in the boat and they went to the other side. They went to the place where folks weren't looking for a Messiah. They went to a place. And it's interesting that both as Mark and Luke tell the story, it's as if this demon-possessed man were already there ready for the confrontation that would take place. Jesus commanded the demon to come out of the man and the conversation ensued between Jesus and the demon. One of the parts of the story that we sometimes overlook is the naming. Jesus said to the demonic spirit, what is your name? Naming was important in their culture. Calling the name meant they do have power over one. After all, it was usually the father, sometimes the mother, but usually the father, who named the child. And the one who did the naming held the power. And now, Jesus says to the demon, what is your name? And the demon my guess is almost tauntingly said, my name is Legion. For we are many. This man was not possessed by a demon. This man was possessed by demonic spirits to the extent that the demonic spirit, spirits describe themselves as a legion. In the Roman army, a legion consisted of between 3,000 and 6,000 soldiers. And the demon said, My name is Legion, for we are many. This man. They tried to help him. They tried at times to tie him up to keep him from harming himself. But 
that shackles and chains were useless. This crazed individual could break the shackles and chains. He lived in the tombs. He was driven into the desert. He was just crazy and there seemed to be no way to fix the crazy. But Jesus saw the presence of evil. And Jesus did not back down in the face of that evil, but required instead for the demonic to name itself, to show itself, and to leave the man that they had tortured and tormented. The demon said, please do not send us to the abyss. And Jesus granted them that they would go into a herd of pigs that were nearby. The demons left the man, the demons went into the pigs, and the pigs ran headlong into the sea killing themselves in the process. As I said, this was non-Jewish territory, but to the Jewish disciples who traveled with Jesus, to see these dirty pigs, as they would have called them, rushing headlong into the sea. They must have realized that even the most unclean animals could not handle the evil that these demons represented. And so they went flying down the cliff to their death. in the Lamb. The one who lived amongst the tombs, the one that I suspect everybody in town avoided if at all possible. Why, he didn't even wear clothes. But Luke leaves us with this picture. A man sitting at the feet of Jesus and in his right mind. What a contrast. From a rage-filled maniac bent on harm and destruction to a man of peace Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind. But what about those demons? Preaching about those demons can be problematic because some folks believe that these folks were just mentally ill and Jesus understood that and anybody else didn't. Others believe that the story must be taken as it's presented. And I'm one of those people. I believe that at the presence of the very Son of God, evil was making its last and greatest stand. As 
because the presence of God in flesh was so real. The opposition, the demonic, was making its best fight and best pitch. And so, we see a man possessed by demons. And then we begin to ask the question, is there any of that stuff raging inside of me? You see, often, that stuff rages inside of us as a memory or a sense of helplessness. And the demonic gets a foothold even in us. Michael Ronyas, who is, was a professor of preaching in homiletics from Luther Sem- Seminary, says this about the demonic. First, he says, they cause self-destructive behavior in the victim. The young man I referenced at the beginning of my sermon Anytime things got tough, anytime things went wrong, he began destroying himself one drink at a time. I've walked through addiction with other folks. They hate the self destruction, but they know no other way. Most of us have known, particularly young women, who cut themselves, do do harm to themselves because of unresolved fear and anger and trauma in their lives. do things to our body that we should never do. And we do so as a way of inflicting destruction upon ourselves. Just as surely as this demon-possessed man in the first century was throwing himself into the tombs and hurting himself, we do things that sabotage our own lives and destroy ourselves in the process. I've walked in the cemetery more than once trying to be a good pastor and a good presence at the cemetery, but all the time being angry at the person that we were remembering that day because I knew that their own self-destructive behavior had brought them to this place. And their families knew it and their friends knew it. Self-destructive behavior The demons also make us feel trapped in that condition. Another conversation with a couple in my congregation. They'd both been arrested the night before. It was the typical pattern for them. She'd 
began hitting him. And she knew that if she kept hitting him, she would eventually draw a response. He would respond violently, then she would call the police on him. But that night, that night the police showed up and realized that they both had been involved in the violence, and they were both arrested. And when I saw them the next morning, they both said, in essence, we're stuck. We just keep doing this over and over and over again. Realizing that they were stuck. Helped begin for them a journey towards freedom. And then this last thing, they separate the victim from normal living in the family circle. Usually the folks who wander into the church, who are carrying all that they own on their backs, looking for a night or two in a motel before they move on, as they begin to tell their story, It's their behavior that has caused them one by one to lose normal support systems. Their friends don't want them. Their families don't want them. They're literally left to fend for themselves. And the demonic will do that to us. One bitterly cold afternoon years ago, I saw the man coming towards the church office. Everything he owned rolled up in his sleeping bag. And he came in, and the temperatures were supposed to be below zero that night. And he came in and he said to me, and, and we had interacted. I was at that church for seven years, so we had interacted for a long time. He said to me, because it is so cold, my mother is going to let me sleep in the garage tonight. Could you take me to my mother's house? He couldn't stand the thought of her son freezing to death. He also couldn't stand the thought of her son being in her house after some of the things that he had done. And I took him and he spent the night in his mother's garage. A couple of years later, the phone rang. It was the secretary from that church after I had moved on. called to tell me that they had found the man frozen to death, sleeping beside a dumpster close to the church. His mother had finally had to draw the line and not even let him sleep in their garage bitterly cold night. My friends, that's what Satan wants to do to you. He wants you isolated from everyone you love and everyone who loves you. He wants you to feel trapped that there's no way out He 
wants you to believe that the best thing you can do is just keep killing yourself one bad decision at a time. When the truth is, when we say aloud the name of that demon, When we ask our Lord for His help in dealing with those demons that rage inside of us, the evil leaves and moves on. We have to name our Then, my friends, with the power of God, we can live a life of freedom. A crazed man traded shackles and chains and tombs and isolation for a different picture. Sitting at the feet of Jesus, clothed and in his right mind, after such a powerful experience, he asked Jesus, Can I go with you? Can I be one of your followers? And Jesus said, Go home and tell everyone what the Lord has done for you. And every day as that man walked through his village, as he greeted people and had normal conversation and normal interaction, they were reminded that our Lord has power over whatever demons may be raging inside of us. Name your demon. Give it to God. See what happens. Let us stand together and sing our closing hymn. Before we do, I owe you a, an apology. I forgot to wish you a happy Father's Day and a happy Juneteenth. Right now, let's do our last hymn, which is There's a Balm in Gilead.
talked about some things that are very personal today, and I just want to remind you that anytime you need to talk about where you are in life and, and the struggles you have in life, feel free to call me, to get in touch with me by electronic means. I'm always, always happy to hear from you and happy to, to share with you. Now, this morning, we're going to add something back that we had to take away back when there was all that COVID stuff going on. And COVID stuff is still going on. It's just wearing a different face now. But we're going to come back together and start singing Binders together. Here's what I need to say about that. Um, if um, you want to join hands with the folks around you, um, that's fine. If you don't want to join hands, just don't feel like you're doing anything wrong because we're all at a different level of, of um, risk. And so you need to take care of yourself. I already see some folks grabbing hands, and that's fine. But don't feel like you have to. But let's join together in singing our family song that, that we've sung so long, Binders. 